الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على إشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وأهل بيت الطاهرة يجمعين ما بعض فعوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, the previous Sunday which passed was the first day of the Islamic New Year, the first of Muharram al-Haram. And inshallah, the coming Tuesday will be the 10th of Muharram, known as Yom al-Ashura. So inshallah, with this connection, we will speak today about the significance of the beginning of this Islamic year and also the fadail of the day of Ashura, inshallah. First of all, the concept of celebrating the new year. We know in this country there are fireworks and all sorts of celebrations, people stay awake at night. From the Sunnah what we find is that the new year would be greeted with dua. That this was a time of hope and a time of recognition and recourse to Allah Ta'ala. And so in the narrations, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Hisham radiallahu ta'ala who reports that the Sahaba Ikram would learn the following dua for when the new month or new year would begin. So they would recite this dua before a new month and also before a new year. So they would begin to prepare for the time when they would recite this dua. So when the new year begins, this is the dua that they would recite. Allahumma adkhilhu alayna bil amni wal iman. والسلامة والإسلام وجوار من الشيطان وردوان من الرحمن. This is the dua of the companions at the beginning of the new year. Let's just quickly reflect on the elements here. Seeking from Allah Taala, Allahumma adkhilhu, O Allah, enter it upon us. Adkhilhu alayna, so that when this time, this period of time enters upon us, what situation does it find us in? This is the tone of the dua. The first thing which is prayed for is amn and with it iman. And amn is safety and security. And this is something which we take for granted because we enjoy it. How often do we pray for safety and security? Because we live in a place which is safe and secure. But when we, have, we see around the world the people who do not have safety and security, that's the one thing that they would pray for above all else basic security of life and limb. So the first thing they prayed for is Amn. And this is one of the sanctities of the location of Mecca al Mukarramah that Allah Ta'ala made it a place which, was, which had Amn, safety and security. Even in the pre-Islamic times, people avoided conflict in that area. And again, the sacred months, people avoided conflict in those four sacred months. We'll talk about that, inshallah. So Allah Ta'ala made the land around the Kaaba a place of safety and security. The first thing they used to pray for is Amn and then Iman. That with this security they should be in a state of Iman. That Allah Ta'ala should preserve their faith, their belief. That this is a recognition of a successful existence. To believe in Allah Ta'ala and His messengers, His books, the Malaika and the accountability of the last day. That this Iman should be preserved. And for this, the Sahaba Kiram were also willing to endure hardships so that their Iman would be preserved. They left all the things which they loved, family, land, etc. Why? To preserve their Iman. So these were the things which were precious to, this, this, to them. This is the important point. They had known a time when they didn't have this Iman and so this Iman was precious to them. For us, because we are born, from the moment we are born, we are given an identity, so we don't appreciate always the value of this. So the first thing that they prayed for, Allahumma adkhilhu alayna bil amni wal iman, safety and security and iman in the heart. Was salamati wal islam. Again, salamati again is another form of security to be correct in all your being, your health to be intact, to find peace and safety. Again, this is connected to amn. That amn is the circumstances around you. And then salama is the fact that you are also sound of body and mind as well. And that you are finding yourself in an environment of security. And that is amn. So amni wal iman was salamati wal islam. 
You see the root here, Sin, Lam, Mim, is the same. Salamati wal Islam. Salama is that you are sound in mind and, uh, mind and body. And Islam is that you are in full submission to Allah Ta'ala and His commands. So first they prayed for Iman and then Islam. Iman meaning they believe and Islam meaning they obey. To believe and then to obey. So Islam is the outward recognition of the inward belief. That the limbs and the organs are obedient to the commands of Allah Ta'ala, reflecting the belief which is in, inside. وَجِوَارٍ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَرِدْوَانٍ مِّنَ الرَّحْمَانِ Now there is a contrast between these two words, shaitan, rahman. You see that there is a rhyme in here, shaitan and rahman. Now the two paths, do you obey the shaitan, do you obey the rahman? So they would ask for protection from the shaitan. And they would uh, uh, ask for the pleasure of the Rahman. That they should be able to have strength to resist the enticements of shaitan. That his whisperings and his enticements, his misguidance should not affect them. That they should be strong enough to resist and that they should earn the pleasure of the Rahman. وَرِدْوَانِ مِنَ Rahman. This is the situation. They are making, in other words, to make good choices, good decisions, to be led in the right direction. So this uh, dua uh, is mentioned in the collections of uh, Baghawi and Tabarani and different scholars have mentioned these narrations to be Hassan or Sahih uh, in their uh, e examinations of these uh, uh, narrations. Next uh, verse of the Quran, Surah At-Tawbah chapter 9 verse 36 in which Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ أَثْنَا إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا meaning 12 months. The reckoning of the months with Allah Ta'ala إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا 12 months فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ in the record of Allah يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ هُرُمْ from the time when the heavens and the earth were created and four of them are sacred. From the Hadith Sharif of the Prophet ﷺ, we know that these are Dhul Qada, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram Al Haram. So this month is one of these sacred months. A time of safety and security and avoiding conflict. And then the other is Rajab Al Murajab. Arba'atun Hurum. Four of them are sacred including this month of Muharram Al Haram. ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمْ And this is the established religion. So this is the tradition that Allah Ta'ala has always uh, intended that this should be the case, that time should be measured in this way. And in Surah Yunus, he also said that the <coughs> movements of the sun and the moon, this is also in order for us to reckon time. That we count time by what? By the orbits of the sun and the moon. The earth around the sun and the moon around the earth. This gives us our reckoning of months and years. لِتَعْلَمُ عَدَدِ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ so that you may know the reckoning of years and count time. So Allah Ta'ala intended for us to count time. This is an important point. One of the things which the New Year, the marking of the New Year tells us is that time itself is a valuable commodity and it is something you should count. Something you should be aware of. You have money, right? You count it. You look at your bank balance. If you suffer a loss, you worry. If you make a profit, you are happy. I have more spending power. When you have gain, surely you are happy because you see your resources have gone up. You can see the numbers. So Allah Ta'ala intended for us to count time so that we would know times which are auspicious and sacred and also so that we would know the value of time, that we would appreciate the passage of time and understand that time doesn't stand still. What we have today, we cannot guarantee that we will have tomorrow. So every time a year passes, reflect on the year which has gone and plan for the year ahead. And make dua that Allah Ta'ala guides you and protects you and the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the passage of time, this appreciation, should make us value time as a commodity. This is one of the things, the gifts that Allah Ta'ala has given us. Life is not only about money and property. Time is a commodity. Health is a commodity. The years that you have on this earth, that is a commodity. How much life does Allah Ta'ala give us on this earth? One of the things that we are supposed to make dua for is a long life of obedience. 
We should not ask Allah Ta'ala to take us from this earth quickly. But we should ask Him to allow us to live a long life on this earth in obedience to Him. That is the best life. The one which is long and in obedience. You see many of these scholars, mashallah, we know they in their 90s, sometimes over 100, and they still give dars -e quran and dars -e hadith After Salatul Fajr, young people can't wake up in the morning. These people wake up for tahajjud. They eat a small amount of rizq. Maybe two meals a day, small meals, enough to live. But they rise for tahajjud, they make dua, and after Salatul Fajr, they give dars of Quran and hadith. They are teaching knowledge. So they are benefiting people, and they keep their minds fresh, and they keep their hearts fresh, and they keep living. Allah Ta'ala gives them hayat. It's a gift from Allah that He gives them a life of obedience and service to His command. That they continue to serve the deen long into their life. That is a life of value and that's a commodity. That kind of time, if Allah Ta'ala gives you this time, this length of time upon the earth, when you can be obedient to Him and you can benefit the people by teaching deen and by supporting good projects, maybe giving charity, spreading knowledge, this is a valuable commodity. This is something to thank Allah Ta'ala for. <coughs> In the same vein, on the same topic, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, famous hadith which you are well aware of, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that we should take advantage of five before five. This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's eloquence, how he explained things, five before five. So it helps you to remember. There are five things which you should appreciate before another five things come upon them and consume them. اغتنم خمسا قبل خمسا Appreciate five things before five things come upon them. شبابك قبل حرمك Your youth before your old age. This is one. وصحتك قبل سقمك And your health before your illness. وغناك قبل فقرك And your wealth before you become poor. وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغُلِكَ And your free time before you become occupied. وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ Allah. See how he built it up into a crescendo. He said, وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ And your life before your death. The reason we don't value the commodities Allah Ta'ala has given us is because we take them for granted. We assume they will last. And so in this hadith, the tone of this hadith is that the Prophet ﷺ is reminding us that there are five things which are very important, which we should appreciate because they are limited. And we should appreciate that they are limited. We should appreciate them and we should appreciate that they are limited. Shabab, youth. Interesting that he began with that. When we are young, we think we have all the time in the world. What's the rush? Let us play, let us entertain ourselves. Life is there for living because we have a whole life ahead of us. Even though we don't know when we are supposed to die. Some people die at the age of five, some people at 15, and some people live to 95. This is Allah's knowledge, not ours. Who are we to say that we have time ahead of us? And this is why the youths, when they are connected to Allah and to the mosques, Allah Ta'ala gives them the shade of his arsh on the Day of Judgment. Because for a person to be in a situation where he is young, or she is young, and she has all the distractions of this dunya, and she is, uh, he or she is able to prioritize the love and service of Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala value, values that, and he includes them amongst the seven who will have the shade of the arsh on the Day of Judgment. We think, we look at old people, and we think we are, we are the people, I say we, maybe that was my youth I'm talking about. We think that we are the people who have the earth, we have the control, we have the facilities, everything. We look at the old people, we say their time is going. But we don't know, maybe we are gone tomorrow and they have another 20 years to live. Maybe they have done a lot with their life and we have done nothing. Youth is not everlasting, you only have to look at the flowers which bloom. In their full beauty, everyone looks at them and admires them and a few days go by and they are wither away and they're gone and they're forgotten. So shabab is something, it's a bloom, it comes upon you, it's a state, a temporary state which comes upon you, people admire you. 
they look at you, they think you are in health, good situation, and then it, like everything, it withers away. And Allah Ta'ala mentioned this so many times in the Qur'an. He mentioned the plant life cycle, that Allah Ta'ala sent rain down, He created life from the dead earth, and it comes forth, and then He said it withers away and dies and goes back. This is the situation of man. We are brought from the earth, and when we bloom and blossom, we think we have all the time in the world, and then like the plants, we turn to dry stubble and we go back into the same earth from where we came. We are not here to bloom forever. We have a limited time to flourish. People admire us and we have time to produce and then we go back into the earth. The people who are gone, we think, we call them history. We say they are history. There was a time when we were the future. Now we are the present, tomorrow we will be history. People will call us. If we make it to the history books, either because we did something good or bad, they will remember us for that. If not, we will be forgotten. Dust blows away, in the same way we will blow away. So we will not last forever. So the Prophet ﷺ reminded us of this. Shababaka qabla haramik. Do something with the energy you have. Do something with the opportunities you have. The intellect you have. Do something now. This is the time for action. Don't wait for the future, which may never come. Wasihataka qabla saqamik. We see people who have long-term health conditions. And we think, well, that's their destiny. And we were supposed to be healthy and they were supposed to be sick. But how do you know? Maybe they will recover and you will get sick tomorrow. We can't assume that we are the healthy ones and someone else was destined to be sick. Sickness is a state which comes upon people. It can come upon anyone. A person can be in perfect health and suddenly have a life-changing condition. Whilst another person may be born with a disability and live a long and healthy life. So these are all blessings which we should appreciate and appreciate that nothing lasts forever. All of these things can change. Change, the key word here is change. Everything can change. So appreciate the situation you are in whilst you have it. And your wealth before you are poor. When we have money in our pockets, we say we have money, so what do we do? We spend it, of course, that's fine. You can spend it, but spend it usefully, spend it wisely. Spend it appropriately, don't do israf. Don't spend in the excess. Because if you waste today and tomorrow you are begging, you have only yourself to blame. But if you spend it wisely, if you invest it for your family or you give it to the poor, you will never regret that money that was spent. No matter what happens tomorrow, you will say, that money that I spent was the best money I spent. Because I am happy with the way I spent it. Maybe the dua that you got for spending it, or maybe the fact that your children live with honor and dignity. Whatever you did, you spent the money, you used it. There are many narrations around this. We can go into these topics. One time the Prophet ﷺ came home and his wife said that there was some meat in the house and she said, this is what is left and everything else has been given away. And he said, what has been given away is what remains because that is charity and this is what is left. This, this is the one that hasn't been converted into good actions but all of the rest has been banked. It has been converted into a good deed. That's not been given away, that has been invested. This is still work in progress. We have to do something to make this into a good deed yet. So this is, you have to change your perception. Sometimes, you know, we get frustrated that a project hasn't worked out. We intend something to happen, like to, we want to have a job or a career, we want to go to another country or something. We have a plan. And the plan doesn't work out and we become frustrated. And we lament the opportunity that we have missed out on. But that free time that you have, that is also a commodity. Don't think that only the job which gives you money is a commodity. The free time you have is also a commodity. That is time for you to learn, for you to spend time with your families, for you to do good deeds, for you to acquire knowledge, spread knowledge, teach, anything. Volunteer your services, all of this is time. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شغلك. Don't wait until you become occupied and busy and then say, oh, I wish I had time. When you have time, use it. I don't think this one needs elaboration. Appreciate your life before your death comes upon you. And then the day of Ashura and its blessings, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about that in a hadith in Muslim Sharif, a Sahih hadith. Abu Qatada radiallahu ta'ala who reported the Prophet sallallahu was asked about fasting the day of Arafat and he said it will expiate the sins of the previous and the coming years. 
يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَاضِيَةَ وَالْبَاقِيَةَ So he said the year before and the ones to come. And then he was asked about fasting on the day of Ashura. He said, يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَاضِيَةَ That it will expiate the sins of the year past. So the day of Ashura, as I said, is Tuesday. Inshallah, if you are able to, then you should fast on that day. And inshallah, it will expiate the sins of the, the year which is gone, according to the hadith of the Prophet there's one other thing I want to mention in the last few minutes, the connection of the day of Ashura. The Qur'an narrates, Allah Ta'ala said in verse 5 of Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14. He said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ He said, indeed we sent Musa Alayhi salam with our, with our signs, meaning with the signs of Allah Ta'ala, ordering him, take your people out of darkness into the light. Akhrij qawmaka, take your people out, min al-dhulumati ila nur, from the darkness into the light. Wa dhakkirhum bi ayyamillah, and remind them of the days of Allah. Inna fi dhalika la ayatin li kulli sabbarin shakur, in this there are signs for all those who are patient and grateful. This is an important point for us. The verse is about the salvation of Bani Israel. Sayyidina Musa salam, was sent to take his people out, to take his people out of a situation of darkness into a situation of light. A situation where they were oppressed to a situation where they found salvation. And he was sent to take them from one situation to another. Now, according to the hadith, we are told Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala who reports this hadith which is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim Sharif that when the Muslims came to Medina the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked the Jewish people about this day of Ashura about why they fasted on this day and so they said that Musa alayhi salam fasted on this day due to gratitude to give thanks for the deliverance from Fir'aun and so we also fast on it. And so the Prophet sallallahu ordered his followers to fast on this day. And different narrations say that he uh, said to fast on this day. That's an optional fast. But also that he said if we, if we live another year, we will fast on the 9th as well, the day before. And some people said there are narrations about fasting on the 10th and the 11th. And some people even said that it's good to fast 9th, 10th and 11th if you can do it. And also Friday, one thing to mention that we shouldn't single out Friday for fasting. So generally, if you find that you are fasting on a Friday, whether it's because it's Ashura or something, try to join it with the 9th or the 10th. There's more barakah in doing that, but to avoid singling out Friday for fasting, because it's the day of Eid. We shouldn't single out Friday for fasting. But this time it's on Tuesday. You can fast on Tuesday, inshallah. It's the day of Ashura. If you can do the 9th and the 10th, Monday, Tuesday, or 10th, 11th, Tuesday, Wednesday. If you can only do Ashura, may Allah accept it. Whatever is easy for you. But the point that we understand from this is that Ashura is a time of deliverance when Allah Ta'ala delivered Bani Israel from the oppression of Fir'aun and so out of thankfulness Bani Israel used to fast on this day and the Prophet Sallallahu said Nahnu ahaqqu bi Musa we, are, we have more right with, over Musa that he is the a brother prophet of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so I make dua especially on this coming day of Ashura and may all of us, may the ummah all over the world make this dua that it should be a day of salvation for the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. May it be a day of deliverance for them. May it be a day when they should be freed from oppression, freed from harm. May it be a day of safety and security for them, of peace for them. And a situation where they can practice their faith in peace without harm, without persecution. May Allah Ta'ala free the oppressed from all forms of oppression and give them a blessed life in this world and may He reward them abundantly in the hereafter. Just before I forget, uh, finish here, I want to focus your mind on one thing here. That Allah Ta'ala said that these days, He said, ذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind them of the days of Allah. These days like Ashura, when the past nations were delivered, these are أَيَّامِ اللَّهِ, the days of Allah. These days have become connected with Allah Ta'ala. They are time for special remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. Why? What is the reason? He gives us the reason. Because on days like this, there are signs that Allah Ta'ala is in control upon His Arsh and He is governing the affairs of this world. And no matter what you see happening before you, تِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ These are the days we alternate between people. 
But one day his command will come. And Fir'aun oppressed for years and years, and one day when Israel found deliverance from him. And it was on a day like this, Ashura, when Allah Ta'ala made this a sign for the people that Allah Ta'ala is in control. And his command will come to be when he decides. But this is a sign for who? لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ shakur. Sabbar is the one who does sabr. He is patient and he is hopeful and he believes and he remains steadfast in all difficulties. And Shakur is the one who is thankful of Allah Ta'ala's blessings past and present and hopes for reward in the future and hopes for the best from Allah Ta'ala. Sabbar and Shakur are both emphatic forms in Arabic. It doesn't mean somebody who is patient and thankful. That's what the translations say. People who understand Arabic will tell you, it means the one who is exceedingly patient and exceedingly grateful. Both of these are emphatic forms in Arabic. And they are not used lightly in this verse. You have to remain patient in all situations. The magnitude and the duration of that patience may be beyond what you imagine. And the shukr should also be the same. It should be intense and it should be protracted beyond what you might expect that you have to do. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand the words of the Quran, make it a source of hope for us, and may He make this day of Ashura a means of salvation for the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alaykum.